Kareem, shalom. So we're going to seek to expand on this a little bit more. But just to share some of these memes right here, here, here. Being Jew and being Israelite, right? Let's do that right there. Okay, being Jew and being Israelite. What's the difference? Now, we say we, the black Jews, I of the lion of the tribe of Judah, society, right? Machiber, machiber, a very interesting word connected with like habarim, right? We have machiber from the Ge'ez, the Ethiopic, also found in the royal Amharic, an Afro-Semitic language, Ethiopia, of the Israelites of Ethiopia. Then we also have um, habarim, habarim, as we Hail up and we salute the Chabarim, Rastafari Chabarim, Chaber. Interesting getting into that. So linguistically, there's a lot of link right there. So when we say like Jew, right, to be a Jew. Now we're speaking English. You know, people like to play little games. You know, they like to talk about, oh, well, the New Testament is written in Greek. And they like to say, well, therefore, you know, here's where the faulty logic comes in. They say, therefore, the New Testament is written by the Greeks. And then while they're saying these things to you, they are speaking English. And they're supposed to be like a black conscious person or conscious so-called Israelite. And they're not even conscious of the hypocrisy. Right? So this is where grace, you know, you know, chain, you know, chain. This is where grace is important, right? In spirit and in truth. Right? But Yehudi, right? We say Yehudi, right? Yehudi. Now some say Yahudi. Touched on it on the podcast and going through why it is the name right Yehudi we say Judah Yehuda right some people say Yah and this because because of some of the Gentile errors in their translation or mistranslation or questionable translations like many of us I as a Rastafari right when I heard the brethren say Ja and pointed out Psalm 68 verse 4 Right? That was significant for I and I because what was interesting is saying by his name Jah. Right? And then we notice that the Christians, right, they would say God, right? They'll say Lord, they'll say the Gentile, right? The English, you know, the we could say the British, the Anglo American tetragrammaton. Tetragrammaton mean the four letters, you know, like we say the Y H W H in the Hebrew. Well they have the Gentile tetragrammaton L O R D. I, the L-O-R-D. So notice that in the Bible, even the translation, there's a couple of areas where it says Jehovah, Jehovah. And then we have one area particularly where it says Jah. Right? And note that it's only the Rastafari right? called Chosen and Faithful. In the original, first proclaims the Rastafari identified the link of black people with Israelite. So some of the latter day Rastas and different, whether Rasta, Rasta Curious, or the called and chosen and faithful Rastafari, called the chosen and faithful should know the truth, right? So this whole idea of being an Israelite, the elders of Rastafari showed I and I that and, and fact checking, you know, their information is like, Chan, so what we hear today about black people and Israel is just another wave Right, even from the 70 AD, 1969, 70 AD, the One West, ISUPK, other camps that rose up around that time. Right, I'm not gonna say is a Yohanna come lately, but it's kind of a Yohanna come lately kind of a thing. You know, what we have going on today, but it's still good because wave after wave, when we read Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 37, you know, Valley of the Dry Bones. We read it and you might get an overview but by studying it, reading and studying, you see it's waves, different waves, right? To reach the different generations and grace, right? To rise up, you know, lost Israel, right? Rising up, right? Awakening, wake up, right? Valley of the Dry Bones is an excellent point of reference. But Jew biblically is Yehuda, Yehuda, right? Or Jew biblically is Yehudi, right? Yehudi, right? Um, and then we have, like in the English, we can write it as Y I H U D I, right? Yehudi. And Yehuda, right? Which is the patriarchal name, Judah, Yehuda, right? It does not mean Jah prays, though his mother, right? Leah, though she prays Yahweh, right? Yahweh, Hashem, Hakadosh, Baruch, Baruch Hashem. You have to note this right here, right? The name means praised, 
So she praised Jah, she praised Yahweh for having conceived another seed. And she called that seed that she had conceived, Judah, Yehuda, she called him Yehuda. And Yehuda means celebrated and praised. Even in the King James translation says, Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Because it brings out the meaning of the name, praised. He will be praised because his mother praised Yahweh, Yahweh, Jehovah. She praised yod heh Yahweh, Yahweh, right? She praised he who be, who he be, HaKadosh Baruch Hu Baruch Hashem because she was able to conceive another seed, right? And because of her longing, right, to be, you know, that Eshet, Isha, Oset, that woman, right? to that wife, to Yaiko, right, to Jacob, right? If you read the narrative, it brings that out right there, right? But it's because of the whole, well, no J in Hebrew, and instead of Jah, according to the Hebrew, be Yah, right? And therefore, to see everywhere we see a Yod and a He, everywhere we see like the Y and the H, right, Hebraically, it's a zeal, right? It's a zeal, right? As the scripts even says, um, right, you know, having a zeal without having the knowledge, the real knowledge. It sounds nice. So a lot of ones will say Yah, Yahuda, or Yahada, or Yahuda. They'll say Yah, Yah, Yah. And it's a, it, the name means praise, praise Jah. But even in the Hebrew to say praise Yah is a different construct. I just want to say that right there. In the Hebrew to say praise Jah. I'm just, word to the wise. But on being, on being, let's see, bring this up right here. Being a Jew. I'm going to sum this up right here just kind of briefly. Being a Jew or a Yehudi, right? A Yehudi, right? Is faith, right? We say faith and faith base and religious, right? Just to explain this right here. Now, when we're reading the Bible and reading the Old Testament and the translation, the KJV, we do come across, right? We do come across it as, let's see if we can do this right here. We do come across it. Right, as let's do this right here. Let's go over here. Where is it? Okay, let's go to let's go over here. Bring this up. Okay, bring this up right here. Let's just show you this right here. And we're going to focus on just the Old Testament first, or the Brit Shashana, which some falsely call the Tanakh. I say falsely call the Tanakh because it's interesting because some ones and ones, you know. Uh, so zealous, but they don't even recognize, you know, they'll say the Tanakh. Sounds nice, but what does Tanakh mean? It's an acronym, a Latter-day acronym, right, that was created, okay, a Latter-day acronym that was created, right, and it was not used in ancient times. And Tanakh is a Canaanite town. Basically, Tanakh is an acronym T for Torah, N for Nabim, Navim for Prophet, and K for the Katubim, the Katubim, which is the writings, like the other sacred writings. Just breaking down generally the three types of writings, right, according to traditional Judaism that we have in the what's called the Old Testament. So we see right here in Second Kings chapter 16 and 6 is the first mention of Jews. Right? It's the H3064. So we're using the Strong's Concordance for especially coming from the English, come from the low degrees, the English, the high degrees. Right? Um, so here we have, you see right here is Yehudi. This is this is true, this is accurate. Right? And we have more than one ancient point of witness. Right? We have our Ethiopic witness, and the transliteration also is Yehuda, because Yehuda means praised celebrated, praise. That's what it says Judah, Yehuda. His mother praised Yahuwah, right? Praise Jehovah, right? Because she was able to conceive seed. And therefore she called the child. She called the child praised. You know, she called the child praised. It's like if I bless Jah, right, for a child, right? And then I have a child, right? Then I call the child Baruch. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I call the child Baruch. But it's because of the whole Y and J thing, right? And coming from this Western Gentile thing. But it's not correct, right, and accurate Hebrew. And this might be one of the most difficult things for us, ones who have now grasped to it, to really kind of, not, not just so much let go, but to grow in grace. But what we're going to do is we're going to show you the difference, right, in the Hebrew. Those who say that Yahuda means 
the name of Judah, as they allege, means John prays, right, must present the Hebrew, the Hebrew of it, not coming from English. Cause, Cause we're gonna show a demonstration, not right here, right now, but since we touched on it before now, but I just wanna show you right here, Yehudi. Interesting that hood, hood is in the midst of Yehudi, right? Now, of course, coming into English, right? Yehudi, you, Jew, right? Comes down to Jew in the translation, right? It's a patronomically from the H 3063, which is Yehuda. It is Yehuda, Yehuda. Right, Yehuda, which means praised, right? Which means praise, right? Um, what's interesting is that in the very section where Judah, Yehuda, and that's another way of spelling it, an older way, J E H U D A H, J E. So the, the J would, as a Y sound, a Yehuda, Yehuda, which means that the one whose name this is is celebrated. That is to say, is praise. I'm gonna say he's praiseworthy. He's the celebrity. Judah, Yehuda, so-called North American Negro, is the celebrated, right? Amongst we can say even in the diaspora, you know. So that math right there is from Yada. What does Yada mean? See, Yada. Right? Some some now remember, we're getting to the root of Yehuda. Yehuda comes from Yada, and then we have Hoda. Hoda. Hoda is praise. Hoda, and then we have Toda. Some of the Israelites in their, um, in their regular form, some of the One West camps, they would say, you know, Tawada, which is kind of baby Hebrew, just enunciating the individual letters, but not putting them in the proper Dik Duk or the Bin Yanim. Bin Yanim. I didn't say Bin Yamin. I didn't say Benjamin, I said Ben Yanin, Ben Yanin, Ben Yan. Ben Yan is like a building, the construction. All right? So you want to build? Let's build. Let's get the basics. Let's not try to superimpose our ideas, our Western Gentile half original ideas, but see the true context. So Yada means to throw, to cast, to, to, to throw, to shoot, to cast. Right? Yada. And Yada in the he fill sense, the he fill sense. Right, that he feel sense mean to give thanks, to Lord, to praise, to confess, to confess. Now the context of the confession or the praise is related to Ha Elohim, Ha Elohim, the power. Right? Yahweh Eloheinu, right, to Jehovah our power. But the name itself, right, means praise. In one sense of Yada, one sense of praise. Right, can also be to, con in the Heath Pael sense, the same root word, yada, means to confess, like to confess chatat, chet, to confess sin, uckery, lack, falling short, missing the mark. So the same word for praise also means to confess, but here's the key, it's from the root, the getting to the root, yada, means to stretch forth the hand, to throw the hands, like throwing hands. So in praise and in worship, Right? Ancient, we could say Afro Semitically, the hands was used. Put your hands up, put your hands up. But also in confessing, right? When somebody's pleading with somebody, right? In that ancient kind of, um, we could say, word, hand sign way is to put your hands forward. You know, like you put your hands forward. Like if you're pleading with somebody and you really plead with them, you might not notice if you use your hand to gesture and articulate, you're using your hands, the hands out and the palms up, right? So it's interesting, that's the root of it. So one sense of the word, so the context is important, of Judah is brought out, even his mother, it says his mother, she says she prays, didn't it say that his mother prays Jehovah? Now when you read the Hebrew there, it's a whole different construct because it's saying something different. She prays Jehovah, Yahweh, right? And she named her child praised. In other words, she had faith in he who be who he be, HaKadosh Baruch Hu Baruch Hashem. And because of that faith, the work, right? Conceiving the seed, bringing forth the child, the child being the product, the, the, the product to say the child, the son, is praised, right? So the implication is that he's praised Right? Judah, Yehuda means praise because his mother, 
right, had faith and she praised Yahweh. She praised Jehovah. So yes, his mother praised Jehovah. Yes, that's correct. And she named him praised. She praised Jehovah and she named him praised. That's the sense there. It's not that the name Yehuda is Yaha. Even Yah Yahuda does not mean praise in Hebrew. If you know anything about the construction, it does not mean praise in Hebrew. In fact, when you say Yahuda, let's just bring it out right here. When you say Yahuda in that sentence, you're saying, well, it means to praise Jah. No, actually, it means that Jah praises. When you say Yahuda, it means that Jah praises. In other words, that there is somebody that Jah has praised, that, that Jah is praising somebody. So you see how wrong it is. All right. Yes, so the zeal, so recognize one's having the zeal because instead of say the ja, ones go forward and say no J in Hebrew to the Y and therefore say Ya. Okay. But now when looking at the name Yehuda, because it begins with Yod and the next letter is Hey, does not mean that this word whose root word is Yada. Now see, notice something. We have Yada and then we have Hoda. See, here's where the building and construction is important to understand the science of language and the patterns. There are certain patterns, right? There are certain patterns and understand the patterns. Look here, Strong's definition says that Yada right here, right? It's a demonitive, right? Denominative from Yad. You know what Yad is? Yad or Yod. Yod means a hand. That's what it says. Yada. See, Yad means hand and Yada. See, the A-H sound at the end in Hebrew, it has a sense like if I say Mitzrayim, Mitzrayim is Egypt, right? If I say like one went to Egypt in the biblical language, right? The biblical script, Masoretic script, in the sense of going to Egypt, it wouldn't be written as Mitzrayim. It'll be written as, as Mitzrayma, Mitzrayma, right? There's a place called um, Haran. If I'm going to, like it says, like Jacob and others went to Haran, it would have Harana, Harana. So that A-H at the end is part of the pattern, almost saying something to in the direction of. Here's what's interesting. The word Yada, which means to throw the hands, to throw, to cast, to stretch the hands forth, right? In a variety of applications come from the Hebrew root Yad. And Yad, as we're showing you right here, means the hand hand and the hand symbolically in the figurative sense is strength and power he was in his hand he wasn't literally in his hand but in the figurative sense he was in his strength he was in his power right and there's a metaphorical sense and there's special senses like in some places a sign a monument a part we can even use yad the word literally for hand as a fraction fractional part when we're doing business or mathematical kind of things, we have it as a share, a part, a fractional part. Yad is also used in the sense of time and repetition. Yad is also used in the axle of the trees, the axle, a stay, a support, right? Tendons or tenons, like the tenons in the tabernacle, you read in the Hebrew, the tenons that help to interlock and clasp and hold things together, it's called a yad, right? And the seventh way that it's used is as a phallus. So the yod in a metaphorical sense could be the penis too, right? The yod, a phallus. A phallus is a yod, right? He put in his hand. Therefore, it depends on the context. We can show you actually, you know, I think in Song of Songs when the maiden says he put his hand at the door. Now, there's a twofold, at least in the Hebrew, two truths, a twofold interpretation. So you can force the interpretation of Yod being a penis, but you're going to basically be, as they say, a dick, you know, a penis yourself because it won't apply in the ways you force it. But we're just showing you, right, how this, now they say the meaning is unsure because of, you know, um, the Western whitewash counterfeit Christian pseudo morality. You know, they have this pseudo morality. You know what I mean? They'll have, you know, a lot of things, porn, all kind of sexualities can be just legalized. Everybody can do it. But then if we talk about, hey, you know, the Bible actually is talking a little something. Oh, don't say that about the Bible. Anyway, wrist, the wrist of the hands is also the yacht. So when we talk about even the Moshiach Yeshua, Yeshua um, Hanotri, he being crucified, some people believe that the nails were driven through the palms of his hand. 
right? Because when it says in the scripture, see my hands. But others understand and know that when they crucified ones, the professional crucifiers like the Romans, there is a little lock joint in the wrist. Those who know anatomy know what I'm talking about. There's a little, like, there's a little lock joint that if you know exactly and you feel the wrist in a person's hand, you can actually put, you know, in a sense it kind of breaks off the hand, but then again, you, you're crucifying them, right? So basically by nailing it right there would hold. That's where the body's weight, the body's weight is hard to hold if you nail somebody in the hand. But if you nail them in the wrist, my point here is that this word right here, Yad, which often is translated as hand, in its fuller sense and its Hebrew usage, also is found as wrist. The wrist is the hand. So where was the nails according to the New Testament? Was it in the palm? Of, see, the word for the palm of the hand in Hebrew is kaf. Is kaf or kaf, right? The word for like the fist of the hand, right, is the yad. Right? Like you look at the Hebrew letter, it looks like almost like a rolled up fist, like the black power symbol. Right? The Yod. Right? That's what it says. The open one, right? Indicating power means direction, sting from the clothes. They said the clothes one, the cough. Right? That's the palm. You see the palm? Right? So you have the open hand and the palm. So the palm, the cough, is like the palm part. So like, you know, the fist part, right? The hand is the hand, but then the palm. So if it was in the cough, like the leaves, the cough is also like the leaves, like the palm, the leaves. Are they going to bring that up right here? The palms, the handles, like, yeah, the hand-shaped branches or the fronts of palm trees, right? But anyway, the wrist, it brought it out right there very well, bringing it down here, the hollow, right? It says right here from this, the hollow of the hand. So here's the cough. The cough is the hollow of the hand, while the hand... Moreover, it's referred to as the Yod, right? So we're pointing that out because all this has to do with Yehuda. Oh, wow. Let's just go back to this because we said we was going to be that long in this one right here and see to get through this. This will be more on Judah, but this is going to be part of a series on being Jew, right? Or Yehudi, right? Being Yehudi, right? And being um, is Yisraeli, Yisraeli. Right? Yisraeli is the biblical way to say Israelite. Yisraeli. So in a sense, in the Western Gentile sense, Israeli is kind of a close, right? It's like a kalk, right? Kalk, like one of these kalks, these layers that they do. Some of the Ashkenazi and the Yiddish speaking, they have these layers right there, right? But it's really Yisraeli, Yisraeli. But here, it's showing you right here the hand. The difference in the hand, power means direction. Right? There's the verse, some of you might know it in the Bible, I think it's in Proverbs, where it says that life and death is in the power of the tongue. In the actual Hebrew, right, it says life and death is in the hand of the tongue, literally. So you see right here, bringing, breaking down the word hand, it says to use, like literally to use, that is to hold out the hand, physically to throw. This is at the root of Judah whose name is interpreted as praised or celebrated. But now, linking the inner meanings of this word sound, the literal root is hand. But now in the Yada sense, right, to throw like a stone or an arrow, that's also to stretch forth the hand. Right, stretch forth the hand, stretch forth the hand. So you can stretch forth the hand like in war to throw a stone or arrow. You can stretch forth the hand in worship. Right, you stretch forth the hand in work in service, add or wait. Now look at the last one right there. It says, especially to revere or worship with extended hands. You see that right there? So Judah is the one that the fellow tribes, Yehudi, Judah, even we the black Jews, the line of the tribe of Judah, but Judah is the one that the other brothers, according to what the prophecy of the father, by right, the deathbed Braca of the patriarch Abinu Yaakov, right? Judah, you're the one to whom what the brethren shall come, right? right? And Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall what? To praise. So the praise sense almost brings out, there'll be a worshipful sense to Judah because from Yehuda comes the king, even from the lion of the tribe of Judah. Then the, the next sense of Yada, as we pointed out, can mean to be moaned by wringing the hands. 
So notice the three senses of hands. We have yada to throw the hands, like to throw an arrow or to throw a stone or to throw hands, almost like to say box, right? Then we get the next sense, right, of, of um, yada, yada to worship, to revere, to worship in the sense of stretching forth one's hand to, you know, like, like for example, some friend of yours or person that you like comes along and you see them over there. First thing you do, you put your hands up and you stretch for your hand like you want to get a hug or you want to hug them, whatever. But that symbolic act is an act of revering or honoring someone or when you say worshiping in the true sense of the word worshiping, you're showing them what they are worth. They're worth so much that you would like to hug them and embrace them. Who would want to do that to an enemy? Yovis, right? And the third sense is to be moan. Be moaned by wringing the hands. The best example I can give here is watch some of the Nollywood and the African movies, right? And maybe even some of the Asian movies because they have like these old traditional things that people would do, like natural things, not these artificial inflections of, you know, the Western Gentile paradigm where people do things kind of like because they are trained to do it, but there's something that people would do in a natural sense. That if somebody is bemoaning something, they kind of hold their hand and wring their hand. Oh my, oh my. You see, they're wringing their hand. You know, that's the next sense, right? And it can also then lead to either like a confession. If somebody's confessing, right, they tend to hold their hand. So it can be confession and confessing to praise. It can be to shoot and to thank. All of this is within the name. And you'll find that in the Braka of the patriarch Jacob, when he goes through everything he says to Judah and later on with Moshe, Robenu, when he blesses the tribes, right, and he praises and blesses Judah, you'll see the blessing goes through the different aspects, right, that is embedded in the Hebrew meaning, right, of the name coming from the root and the different application. Because he understood what the language, what the, our language, their own language and our language meant. So by using this word and giving a blessing, you're bringing out other aspects that come from the root word and saying that the Almighty is going to fulfill. In other words, fulfill your name. A good name is rather to be chosen. Right? So right there, there, there. So Judah, right? We have Yehuda, right? We have Judah, the name of five Israelites, also of the tribe descended from the first and of his territory, Yehuda. So we have Yehuda referring to Judah. And then we have Yehudi, one who's of the tribe of Judah. Now, something interesting happens in the 400 years between the end of the Old Testament and the beginning of the New Testament. See, it's important to understand that because then we can comprehend why we have this Jew and the Jews in the New Testament whom Yeshua HaMoshiach Jesus of Nazareth, a.k.a. Jesus Christ, he identifies himself with these people. He says to Samaritan woman, ye worship that which you, you all worship, which you don't even know what you're worshiping. We know what we worship. Yeshua, he says, for salvation is of the Yehudi. Well, actually, he says in the plural sense, Yehudim, of the Judahites. So Jew both applies, as we're showing right here, Right. Let's look at this right up here now. We we looked up. We should probably add it Jews. My right? Jews to it right there, so we can just narrow the search. Right. Right. This is Jews right here. Right. And definitely, you see all these different areas, all the Old Testament. So when you see Jews here, it should say Yehudin. Right. Or it says in the Hebrew Yehudin. Right. Those who are, are descended from the tribe of Judah. Now it's between the what some call the intertestamental or the apocryphal, the Maccabees, apocryphal, those books they took out the Bible and white Christianity, right? But it was there in the earlier and even among the Yehudim, right? Those books then explain how in the New Testament times of the New Berit Hadashah times, how Yehudi had a twofold, as we're seeking to explain right here, right? We're talking about being a Jew and being Israelite. It had a twofold, right? Faith and religious, coming like from the New Testament sense, right? Of, of faith, one's faith, i.e. or religion, right? And then in the Old Testament sense of being of that tribe and territory of Yehuda. 
And if he was of the tribe and territory of Yehuda, in the Hebrew used for to as a Yehudi, a Yehudi. Now the translator, the KJV translators, they translate that into English as Jew and Jews. Right? And that's where we get the sense in the English. So it's in translation. Now, being of the tribe of Judah is birthright and heritage. Right? Remember, the tribe of Judah is the last of the Israelite standing. That's so why we get the New Testament and it's basically about the tribe of Judah, but we have some of the remnant of Benjamin and Levi, but the big, the big tribe, right, is the tribe of Yehuda. And then we hear Paul in the New Testament says that he is a Jew, he's a Yehudi, and then he says he's of the tribe of Benjamin. Now remember, in the Old Testament sense, being of the tribe, when you say that I'm a Yehudi, it meant that you was of the tribe exclusively of Judah. But Judah becomes, we could say Judah becomes exactly as his Baraka, as the blessing by Yaakov, his father, right, the patriarch Jacob, and the blessing by Robeno, right, by our teacher Moshe, by Moses. So there's one blessing, right, by the patriarch, the father in, in Genesis, and then we have in Deuteronomy the blessing by the lawgiver, by Moshe, right? So being Yehudi, Right, basically, in its nowadays context, let's put it like that, in its nowadays context is being of a faith or a religion, right? Because some people say being Jew is, is a racial. I guess in a sense, it would seem that way, right? So being Jew in the, this is why Paul says he is a Yehudi. He's a Yehudi because he is of the right faith. This is why Yeshua even says, that ye worship that which you know not. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. So we have Paul identifying with being a Jew or a Yehudi, right? And we have Yeshua, right? Jesus, Yeshua, Hanotri, Robeno. We have him also identifying the true faith with being of the Jews. I want to seal this up right here, right? And we'll return to this, John Willing. Seal this up right here. Um, let's see, salvation. Let's put right here, salvation. Salvation. You see that? Okay, salvation. Boom. You see it? Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews. All right? And the red letter, of course, is John chapter 4, verse 22. John chapter 4, verse 22 right here let's bring this up let's see let's see the better hebrew read of this right here right here here we go right here the better hebrew read of this right here um he says atem misha tachewim elasher lo ye daetem like yeah you don't know what you're worshiping he speak to all of you he speak to her but he's saying to you and your people right wa nachnu Wa nachnu, wa nachnu, wa an anachnu. Right? This is more the ancient way of enunciating. Modern Hebrew they'll say va nachnu, va nachnu. Ancient point in wa nachnu, misha tachuim, mish tachuim. But we, mish tachuim, but we worship. Right? Now, interesting the word worship actually, shacha means to bow. Right? It actually means to bow. Right? The proper word, like to prostrate. Right? Wa nachnu mishtachawin ilasher yadainu. For we know, right? We know what yadainu, we know what we worship. Key because ha Yeshua, ha Yeshua, ha Yeshua, the Yeshua, ha Yeshua, because the Yeshua, right? Yeshua, right? So what we have here is Yeshua. It's kind of interesting because here we have Yeshua, right? Yeshua, right? The, the word sound. He says, for Yeshua, salvation, mean ha Yehudim, ha Yehudim, he. For salvation, check this out in the Hebrew. For salvation, she is from the Yehudim, ha Yehudim. She is from the Jews because ha Yeshua in the Hebrew sense. See, I say it here in Hebrew. Those who can read the glyphs know there's a difference. We have Yeshua. Yeshua. Last letter is a R in the R, the R, right? The R, the hard A. Yeshua. Yeshua. Right? Here we have Hi Yeshua. 
Hi Yeshua. It ends with a hey. We're, we're, we're highlighting this word right here, right? You see the last letter. The difference is that the last letter right here in Yeshua's name, let's see if we can go right here, does not have the hey, right? Does not have the H. So this right here, Yeshua, Yeshua is speaking about Hi Yeshua. Hi Yeshua, right? And in the Hebraic gender sense, right? Salvation is a feminine, right? Is a feminine, we say, of an energetic as we have, you know, the the divine double helix, like even the binary principle is just, is just built into this simulation, into creation, right? The male and female, right? He created them. So the point being right here is that Yeshua basically is saying that salvation is of the Yehudi, the Yehudim, right? Of the Judahite. This here further backs up this point, right? When it's first developed, it's in the books that have been taken out the Bible, the apocryphal books, the Maccabees, right? So you really need Maccabees and the other apocryphal and so-called pseudepigraphal books, lost books of the Bible, forgotten books of Eden, right? Because this is what the early Yehudi, the Jews, and the, the Nazarenes, before they were called Christians. And we know the first Nazarenes were Yehudim, right? You could check even the New Testament scripture. So once again, being Yehudi is faith, is faith-based, right? Or what one may say, da'ati, da'ati, da'ati. Da'ati is like to say, da'at in Hebrew means to know, right? Da'at from da'a. Da'a is like knowledge. Da'at means to know. But it's also what we use for religion. <laughs> religion, see, see. so when we talk about religion, religio come from Greek. I'm only speaking English here because most ones understand English. But the word, the term da'ati, right, from da'at, from da'a, which means to know. What you know, what you, what you admit in knowing, right? What you profess in knowing, right? So that's the religious, we could say, aspect. So really being Yehudi, being Judahite in the fullness is twofold, right? Being Yehudi is twofold. And Paul in the New Testament gives a good example. And also Yeshua, Moshe also gives the best example right there. Where he says, salvation, she is of the Yehudi. Right, and Paul says that he is a Jew and he is a Benjamite. So, what he's saying is that he is of the true faith, the true admittance, that true gnosis, that da'ati, right? And, right, he is of the tribe of Benjamin. While Yeshua, right, can also say and basically effectively said in the 422 quote from John, right, that he is of the true faith, da'ati. Right, of the true gnosis, the true da'at, the true data, divine data, and he be being of the tribe of Yehuda, right? So both of the faith, right, in spirit, right, and then truly descended from this seed, from this race, this zera, this seed, right, birthright heritage. So I hope this is helpful, brothers and sisters, right? Jew, biblically, is Yehudi, right, Yehudi. Right? And in the plural sense, Yehudim. Shalom, Lachem, Yehudim. Yes, I, Rastafari. Yehudim.